Hey guys, welcome back from the weekend. COVID Cocktail Club is back this week with some more drinks, a couple classics, but mostly some creative ones this week. We wanted to do something with tea today because somebody asked us for that. Jason and I are not really tea drinkers, so we had to stretch a little bit for this one, but I consulted a bunch of books and um, my Death & Co book has a whole big bunch of tea infusions actually on it, um, and I really do like doing the tea. The one tea infusion that I know I have liked doing in the past is that Lapsang Souchong. I'm probably saying that wrong. One more time. Lapsang Souchong. That tea is, it's smoky though. It's, it's a very, very smoky tea. So we wanted something that would be a little bit more neutral and that everybody would like. This drink is called the La Dolce Vida, and it is using chamomile infused rye. We've never done any sort of infusions with you guys before, but since infusing really just means letting something sit there and giving it time, we figured we could try it. Chamomile tea is calming and soothing, and all of our nerves could probably use that right now. <laughs> so we thought it would be good. Also, chamomile smooths out rye a little bit. Rye has got a, it's a little bit of a spicy, not spicy, but we call it spicy, but it's got an edge to it, rye. So, a bite. Yeah, bite. So uh, the chamomile will, will sort of, you know, tone it down a little bit. The recipe itself, we always tell you guys that this is not rocket science and there's some very basic formulas to, to good balanced drinks. And the La Dolce Vita is really no different. It's really just a riff on an old pal. So this is sort of like a chamomile old pal. An old pal is the exact same thing, except instead of using a chamomile infused rye, you use regular rye. And instead of using the uh, Saint Germain or the elderflower, you use a dry vermouth. So if you want to swap out those two ingredients, you can make another cocktail. Bonus. And the old pal is sort of a cousin to a Bavardier, which is sort of a cousin to a Negroni. So they're, it all falls under that same umbrella. Definitely. These are all cousins of each other. They're all good friends. They play nicely together. Do you have any, any nerdy facts for us for La Dolce Vita, Jason? I don't, but I just a story I have about the old pal because I actually discovered it by accident with uh, one of Marcy's cousins when we were in Baton Rouge last year. She was excited to get all the ingredients she thought she had for a Boulevardier. And it turns out she bought dry vermouth instead of sweet vermouth. So we discovered an old pal. And it ended up being delicious. So when you mention Old Pal in this recipe, it makes me think of uh, our cousin Rachel in Baton Rouge. So, hey, Rachel. <laughs> Thanks for opening our eyes to this one, Rachel. Yeah. So, happy accidents. It's sort of a, a very Bob Rossi thing that happens in my house all the time, right? Happy accidents. Uh, you know, you got the wrong vermouth, and it's still good. Yeah. Let's go ahead and make this, guys. Three ingredients. And they are all booze. And when we have a cocktail that is all booze, we stir it instead of shake it. So this is my tea infused rye that I put into this cute decanter that I found at a flea market somewhere. How did you do yours? Uh, yours is much prettier. I just, because I didn't know how much I, I, I don't love tea as you mentioned, and I don't know how much I'm gonna love this drink. So I kind of went a little bit lighter in terms of how much and the, the portion, but I just used this little guy right here, had a lid on it. Let it soak for five hours or so. So much like when we were doing the macerating of fruit uh, last week, it's, you know, there's that balance of, of too little, too much. So you, again, you have to see and sort of gauge trial and error of how long to let it infuse for. You use a tea bag rather than just a tea bag. bag. One tea bag and about, I think it was about five ounces of, of rye, six yeah. ounces of rye. So we'll see. In fact, I'm going to actually have a substitution later. I'm going to take away the uh, elderflower. I have extra. I'm going to try with the italicus. A bonus of having extra tea infused rye. So I'll, well, I will report back to uh, the CCC, let you know how that come, comes out. You all can see. I mean, if you, look, if you look at Jason's infusion, it's not that big a deal. It's a little glass bottle that he had laying around. You could use a Pyrex and just stick a tea bag in it. And it sounds very fancy that I tell people you have chamomile infused. Yeah, easy peasy. So we're gonna do two ounces of that. If you really don't have that and you don't want to, just drink in the rye and I won't tell. Three quarters an ounce of Campari. It tastes better if you actually have a Campari jigger, Alec. I was just gonna say, I really like your Campari jigger there, Jason. I have another Campari surprise for you later. Very fancy. And half an ounce of Saint Germain. Shall we stir? 
This one, because it's got such a pretty color, I think it's gonna look really pretty over my clear ice. Isn't that pretty? Your fancy ice tongs. Fancy ice tongs. Look how pretty. That's a cool glass too. Okay. Ooh, that looks so pretty. Ooh, when the light hits it, it calls for no garnish, but I think that that's boring. So I was gonna garnish it with chamomile flowers, but I don't have chamomile flowers. <laughs> so I'm going to make do with what I have and just use these cute flowers from uh, one of my herbs outside. No, I think that totally works. The cinnamon is not poisonous, it sounds delicious. And I was gonna stick a cinnamon stick in it too, just lay it on top of the ice for funsies. And that's all I'm using on mine, just keep it really simple. So and actually, I meant to show you my Campari surprise before I poured it. So I'm, I'm gonna try it this way either and, and see if it works. This is actually a Campari stamp. I may or may not have made good friends with a bartender at our hotel in Charleston last summer. Uh, and they had this left over from Negroni week. So I kind of begged and pleaded and he found this for me in the back. So you just let this stamp sit on top of the ice for about 10 seconds. So if you happen to be a nerd like me and have a stamp, ideally you wanna stamp it before and actually let it sit a little bit longer. Anyways, it's delicious with about the stamp, but that's my little Campari nerdy tool I have. This looks delicious. It's probably the only way I'm gonna drink tea, so we will see how it turns out tomorrow. Tomorrow is Cinco de Mayo. So we are gonna be doing maybe something with agave. Get your tequila. I know, crazy, very original. Get your tequila, get your mezcal. Um, if you have Ancho Reyes, either regular, which is a little smoky, or the more vegetal, vegetal, uh, green verde, either one would work. That's really all you need. Everything else is sort of basic. Some simple, like what, some lime rice? Yeah. And uh, maybe an egg white if you want to be adventurous. Also need your mole bitters tomorrow. That's right, yes. So if you've gone out and bought mole bitters, first of all, you're welcome. Because that is going to be your favorite bitters in your bar. Um, I think I have a backup bottle because mine's like already low. It's, it's by far the most popular bitters bottle in our house. Um, so yes, so it'll be, a, it'll be a riff on what you would expect in Cinco de Mayo, but done sort of in a CCC fashion. So a little more original, uh, kind of off the beaten path. Thanks. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, Rice. Cheers, Jason.